Good, Good morning. morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank I pray you. that you had a blessed week. I know you did if you're listening to me now because God brought you through to see another day. We just ask the Lord to continue to bless us and continue to allow us to do his perfect will. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We just say thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank we you, thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning, Lord, and allowing us a, a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father God. We thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to just speak your word again, Father God, to listen to your sermons, just to hear your voice, Father God. We thank you, Father, for your awesome power, Father God, for saving us, Father God, because we were dying in sin until you redeemed us and brought us to yourself, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father, for a great day, Father, the sunshine, the yes. grass, for air that we can breathe, Father God. We, Lord, we just thank you, Father, because you're an awesome God. We realize that we can't do anything without you, Lord. We can't walk, we can't talk, we can't move, we can't think without you, Lord. So, Father God, we said thank you, Father, for your precious gifts that you've given to us, Lord. Father God, we ask you, Lord, that you watch over and Help all those under the sound of my voice, Father God. You know what each and every person stands in need of, Lord. So I come present each and every person to you, Father God. That you would just heal their hearts, Father God. That you would heal their bodies, Father God. You would touch their finances, Lord. But more important, you would touch their minds so they would receive you, Father. So they can walk in the calling that you gave them, Lord. And walk in the power that you gave them, Lord. Because you told us that we're the head and not the tail, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you, Father. Continue to work on us. Continue to help us minister unto you, Lord. Continue to help us to bring more souls to you, Father God. Just help us to do what you call us to. You said one water and one give, and you give an increase. And Lord, we just want a water that somebody plant. And Lord, give an increase so people will come to you, Father God. Receive your word. Because we don't want anyone to leave this earth without knowing you, Father God. Without receiving you, Lord. Because we know the penalty of not accepting you as their Lord and Savior. And we won't want, we don't want anyone to go to hell, Lord. Father God, we just ask you, Father, that you would just touch the man of the hour, that you would bring forth the word of God, that he would speak what you say to speak, Lord, that you would anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God. Lord, that that word would penetrate our hearts and that we would receive your word. And not only just receive it, Lord, we'll be doers of your word, Father God. And we thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you would touch the psalmist of the hour, Lord, that she will come up boldly and that she will sing unto, the, unto you, Father God. Ignore who's here, who may be listening, but sing unto you, Lord. Strengthen her voice, anoint her from on high, Lord, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord. And Lord, let the melodies touch our hearts, Father God. So we will receive you, Father, and rejoice in all that you can do as well. And Lord, we present each and every person that's going to pray, Lord that you would tell us what they need to say and how to pray, Lord. Because, Father God, there's so many people standing in need of so many things, Lord. And you know about them, but we don't, Lord. But we just want you to bless those, heal those, and deliver those who stand in need of your delivering power, Lord. And we just thank you, Father. And we just present all things to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you were able to join us for our Sunday school, morning, our Sunday school lesson this morning. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. And we're normally finished by 9.30, 9.40 at the latest. This morning lesson was taught by our own minister, Michael Eccles Jr. And he spoke on the word heals. The devotional reading, the background scripture, as well as the lesson came from John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. And when you get an opportunity, if you have not read it, please do so. Because it let us know that God, when he walked the earth, he was ministering to people. He was healing people. He healed the young man who was sick. He healed the person who was demonized. He healed the child who was sick. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. He healed people who had leprosy. But guess what? He not only did it back then. He is still in the healing power. Amen. And just call on him if you stand in need of a healing. Because guess what? He will do it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Just believe and trust in him. He will heal you. And if he says no, he'll give you the grace to go through. Because God is sovereign. He does what he wants to do and it's a reason for each and everything that he does. Next week's lesson is going to be the word saves. The devotional reading is going to come from John chapter 12, verses 44 to 50. The background scripture is going to come from John chapter 12, verses 27 through 50. And the lesson itself is going to be John chapter 12, verses 44 to 50. Please join us next Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. And read those scriptures so that you have a foundation for the lesson. If anyone stands in need of a book or anything like that, let us know. Send us an email, text us, let us know what you stand in need of. I also want to remind you that next Sunday is also Communion Sunday. So those who stand in need that need communion cups, let us know so we can drop those off as well. On July the 23rd, which is the fourth Saturday of the month, we're going to do our outreach ministry. We'll be back at Thayer Street and Front Street, setting up our tables to give out those things that uh, people need. If you are available, come out and assist us. We can always use some help. And we thank the people who have done so in the past. If you're not available, just pray for us because we'll always stand in need of prayer. And then we also um, petition for more items so that we can give out to those that's in need. I believe we still have toiletries. We have um, underwear for the men, some for the women as well. And we normally give out the snacks and the trees as well. Our sermon today is going to come from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The title for today's sermon is, What Money Cannot Buy. The next voice you'll hear will be our Minister of Ashton Eccles with the Samana Selection, followed by Pastor Eccles with the Word of God. Good morning, family. Good morning. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. We said I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. We said I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. We said I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord is my life and my salvation. Amen. Amen. Whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Yes. Amen. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yes. yes. Whom shall I be afraid? Amen. So we Amen. thank God today for a wonderful selection, reminding us of who God is. We can set our hope on Him. He's such a wonderful Savior. We thank God for you, family, those of you who tuned in to be with us this morning. And we trust by the grace of God we shall um, have a place, an edifice eventually. This year, that we can come together and worship God together as a family. It's nice to have the convenience of the home, but it's even nicer to be able to fellowship one with another. There's a, a corporate anointing that happens in the house of God. We, we gather together. We want to experience that, experience God in a, in, a, in a more tangible way. So keep us in our prayers. We see God's face to uh, uh, guide us to what he would have us to do and where to go. We thank God for you today. And for all the things that God is doing in your life and mm -hmm. uh, the life of this ministry. So we, the scriptures have been read. I won't go through this 10 verses, but I do ask you prayerfully read the 18th and 19th chapter of um, Luke. And in your time of leisure, in your time of study, to kind of get the feel of what's going on here in the book. Father, and as we, this had, pray with me. Father, I thank you right now for this time that we've shared together. Please, oh God, in this moment, please anoint us afresh that we might be able to bring a fresh word from heaven. We ask, oh God, you help us to share with your people those things you share with me. I ask it in Jesus' name, and I give you glory and honor and the praise. Amen. Amen. All right. To, as I was saying earlier, the context is so important when you're reading the word of God. So Jesus is now on his uh, final journey in, this, in his earthly life. He's about to go into... Um, 
to go to Jerusalem to be crucified. But at the foot of Jerusalem, low down, uh, Jerusalem is set way up on the, on the hill. But way down at the bottom of Jerusalem, there's this one city that's there that you have to go through to get to Jerusalem. And it's this town called Jericho. Jericho. Jericho was a rich town. Jericho was a town where uh, some um, historians have said they called it uh, mini paradise. Because of where it was situated, some 300 um, uh, feet below sea level. But Jerusalem was 3,000 feet above sea level. Let you see how, how much of a climb it was, is to get from Jericho to Jerusalem. So your last stop before you got to that climb would be to go to that town. And that town was known for its uh, balsam plants. It's the fragrance of the balsam plants of, that were there. It was known for its palm leaves. It was also known to be an area of affluence. Because of all the trading that would go on there. So this was the rich town. This was a town you wanted to move. If you were moving somewhere, and we know what counts when we move somewhere, location, 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 right? This was a place to live, but was a place where the rich people were only could only afford to live. And there we see our subject this morning as we see Jesus uh, coming, passing, coming towards Jerusalem, coming towards Jericho. He, uh, the, he comes in, and before he gets there in chapter 18, as a man who's who is blind, sitting by the roadside and begging. Man is sitting there, sitting by the roadside and begging, and uh, the, and Jesus has accumulated quite a crowd at by this time, and he's traveling almost in a, a parade situation where people are around him, behind him, and in front of him. So as this man cries out, those people that are in front of Jesus try to keep him quiet, and this man wouldn't stop. You know the story. He wouldn't stop. And Jesus stopped and he healed that blind man. So here in the next chapter, we see that he still is not only that happened before he went to Jericho. But when he entered into Jericho to go through, there's another man met here. This man had his eyesight, but this man had some hindrances also. We got to understand this man by the name of Zacchaeus and who he was. The Bible tells us that he was rich, but he was a short dude. He was rich, but he was short. Or should I say he was height challenged or vertically challenged? What's the proper way not to be offensive today to tell somebody they're short? Let's say he's short, right? <laughs> but he was short. And you got to understand that this, the average height of a man during this time was only about 5'5". Five, five. So if Zacchaeus is spoken to be a short man, he had to be less than, probably less than five feet tall. We can think of a Danny DeVito who was, uh, he's like 4'10", I was reading about him. Or how about Simone Biles? Simone Biles, who is uh, acclaimed to be one of the greatest athletes as there's been, is only 4'8". Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> wow. it's hard to believe that she is that small. But so, so I'm trying to get you to think about small. This guy was height challenged during this time. And we got to understand who else was. He was called, he was a, not just a, not just a uh, tax collector or publican, he was called the chief. Of the publicans. Who were the tax collectors and publicans during this day? These were the ones who collected the taxes for Rome. They were the ones that collected taxes for the for those who had infiltrated and then those who had taken over the nation of Israel, the, the land that belonged to Israel. And here's a Jewish man now who was now collecting for a foreign governor, a foreign government. And not just collecting, but he was over collecting. That's how he became rich. Not only was he over collecting, he was chief of the publicans, which means he had other publicans working under him. This man was rich, real rich. You gotta understand what happened during these days. I don't wanna bore your patience too long, but just give the explanation about this is that what Rome would do is require a certain amount of money. You would have those who would have that kind of money up for taxes, you would have those who would have that kind of money who would pay off the taxes for their area. And then they would come back and collect the taxes from the people. But they had the free reign to collect as much as they wanted to. Mm. And that's how they got rich, off the backs of poor people. Which means that publicans weren't popular. And you got to think, what a, he had a government job. <laughs> he had a good government job, but it was a job that, no, that, that wouldn't bring you popularity nor friendship. He was making money. But uh, you got to understand that life is not all about making the money. Mm -hmm. 
We spend most of our time trying to figure out how to get the next dollar. But how many know a dollar doesn't keep you warm at night? There's rich people who are sick on their sick beds right now who will trade their wealth for a day of hell. Mm-hmm. Bars. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they, are, they are people who would, would pay to have a, a loving family. They're people who have huge homes but no love in their home. Mm-hmm. Money can't buy everything. Money is good to have. And guess what? You'll never have enough. If you were to call Oprah right now and ask her, do you have enough money? She would say never. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the more money you get, the more you want. Mm -hmm. And the more money you want, the the more things you'll do to get that money. This man was, we know what kind of spirit. His name actually means pure and upright. Zacchaeus. So you can imagine the the plans that his parents had for him when uh, he was born. They named him pure and upright. And to see what happened to him when he became was really a crook. This is why throughout scripture you'll see that publicans and sinners were always placed together. Mm-hmm. Sinners and publicans. Why? Because he was a man who was collecting, not just collecting, but over collecting for a foreign government. And then looked at the foreign government as being something of, not of God. Occupiers. People came and took their land. And how could you as a Jew collect for the enemy? So they were despised. And the, the, the Pharisees and scribes would not have anything to do with a man who was called a publican. He couldn't come into the synagogue. He couldn't come in, into the areas of worship. He had no place to worship. He was, in other words, he was rich, but he was an outcast. He was an outcast. And when I thought about that, I kept thinking about how sad this was that this man had all this money, but when he wanted to, to see who was going on the parade, he wanted to see Jesus, he didn't have a friend that would lift him up. Mm-hmm. Oh, how sad it is to live a life of, of trying to get ahead and have no friend to lift you up. So if you got a friend to lift you up, you ought to thank God for a family member to lift you up. You ought to thank God for it. It's a lonely life when you step on people to get ahead. Mm-hmm. It's a lonely life. You got money, but money can't buy everything. Can money buy you peace of mind? No. Nope. Nope. But apparently, Zacchaeus, although he had money, he still, he, when he heard about Jesus, he wanted to see Jesus. Because Jesus had a celebrity, a celebrity uh, quality about him. People were before him and following, and he wanted to see this was something coming to town. And Zacchaeus realized that if I stay on the ground, I'll never be. Can you see Zacchaeus running in and out the crowd, trying to get a glimpse? But all he could see was uh, knees. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody, he was nobody's friend, so nobody's going to help him. Nobody's going to help him up. Why? Because he stepped on so many people. Although he was a short man, he stepped on people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so Zacchaeus got this, he had this urge to see Jesus. But what was keeping him from seeing Jesus was a crowd. We got to understand, uh, brothers and sisters, that there's been a lot of things that will try to get in your way from seeing Jesus. Yep. Amen. Mm-hmm. And this was, a, this was a sinful man who wanted to see Jesus. This was a corrupt man who wanted to see Jesus. And you would think, uh, Jesus coming to town, it had to be a hope with some of those people there that he would just stop by my house. He would just come and put his hand on mine. That's what he was doing in a prior chapter, touching children, saying, such is the kingdom of God. The, the disciples tried to keep the children from him, but Jesus said, no, you've got to be, except you become like a child, you will, uh, you will not enter the kingdom of God. So my wife tells me I'm acting childish, I would just say, I'm doing my job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> doing my father's work. <laughs> Amen. But, but Jesus said you had to be childlike. What is childlike? Open and teachable and pliable. He called the child into his presence. And the child just came. No question about what you want. I ain't got time for you. These are the kind of things. So he said, except you become like a child. You will not enter. His disciples one day were arguing back and forth. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? He said, he called the child. He said, let you become like this child. You will know why I enter this kingdom. So God is looking not for childishness, but childlikeness. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That's a difference. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> ah, I'm just being about my father's business. The child, the, the excitement of the child, the, the child's eyes light up on the simplest thing. The dependence of the child. When I was a child, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't doubt that my parents would, would not take care of me. I didn't get in a car and, and watch how my father drove the car and make sure he touched the brakes. I would get in the car in the backseat and play with my toys. Mm-hmm. 
Because I knew my daddy was driving. How many know your daddy's driving? Amen. Amen. Give God a praise right there. He caught that one. My daddy's driving. Why? Because my daddy's driving. Amen. Amen. And so here we see this man who is short of stature. He's in a predicament where he can sit back and, 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 and make excuses of why he couldn't see Jesus. But instead, he made a plan. How many know he made a plan? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. He made a plan, this little man. You know what he did? He ran ahead. That had to be kind of funny, y'all. Mm -hmm. And you know, in his day, dignified, you know, only children ran around. Uh, uh, for a man to run would be like an embarrassment. Men, didn't wa men walk with stature and had a steady gait. We would say swag mm -hmm. today. So men didn't run. So to, and to see a little man run, it made it even funnier. But see a little man running, he said, what I'm going to do, I can't see Jesus from the crowd, so what I'm going to do is go above the crowd. How many know you got to go above the crowd sometimes? Mm -hmm. yeah. You cannot do what the crowd is doing. and still You can't do what other people are doing. What, what kind of crowd is keeping you from seeing Jesus? What about those who, who mock us? I get uh, 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 messages all through the week with just crazy messages, y'all. I got a, a prophet this week that told me that... that uh, I'm going to say it. I got a prophet this week called and said that I was going to, if I didn't if I didn't believe in same-sex marriage, I was going to go to hell. Mm. I just want y'all to know how crazy it is out here. I get various things coming in like that. And you know what? And I look and I say, well, people's minds are all jacked up. We got to learn how to go above the crowd, above what the people are saying. There's people out here who deny Jesus ever existed. Oh, Jesus is fictitious. He never lived. When there's more proof that Jesus lived than it is some of the kings that we, we read about in those books. Right. There's more documentation about the life of Christ in, in non-biblical uh, books. Uh, historians wrote about him actually existing than there is some other kings. We don't doubt Washington lived. We don't doubt Abraham Lincoln lived. We don't doubt they lived because why? We didn't see them. We read about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet when it comes to a historical fact that Jesus actually lived, actually died, and actually rose again, and 500 people saw him at one time. And sign the document that they saw him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He lives, y'all. He lives. Amen. So if we serve a God that's real. So you tell me, here, here, he comes at Kios now, coming. You know he had to be laughed at. You know he had to be talked about. But you know what? When you come to Christ, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. You got to be willing to take some criticism. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You got to be willing to take some criticism. So instead of uh, reading the story over to you, I just want to pull out some points. I want to pull out some points. Number one, I want you to understand that no one's beyond saving. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. No one is beyond saving. Of all the people in the town for Jesus to come to, guess whose house he's going to? He's going to Zacchaeus' house. And to go to, the, to someone's house and to be with them, it, it, it showed an approval of what they were about. To sit there and eat with someone, you show you would show approval. And when Zacchaeus gets in the street, he not only is it funny that he ran, can they even see his little short legs trying to climb a tree? He gets up in that tree and he gets ahead. He, he runs ahead so he can see Jesus with his face on. And he'd be above all the crowd. So y'all know that your efforts to serve God would never go unnoticed in God's sight. Amen. Now remember, you ever did something for someone and made an effort to, to just be a blessing and the same person come back and not do you the same way or do you wrong and you think, well, I'm wasting my time. No, you never waste your time or effort. Everything you do for Christ, you will get rewarded for. He told his disciples that we left everything to follow you. He said, you'll get it back in this life and it'd like to come eternal life. Amen. Anything you do for the Lord, it is never wasted. So never think you're wasting your time or your energy. How many of you are pouring the people who turn on you? Mm -hmm. Amen. You never. I, I walked away sometimes feeling like, well, that was a waste. And the Lord said, well, you, who did you do it for? I said, I did it for you, Lord. He said, well, I saw what you did. Amen. Amen. God sees what you did. So God got to understand what's going on here. This was not accidental meeting. And although this man had money, guess what? He didn't have, he, what he needed was more than what money could ever buy. He was rich, but he still had a need. Sometimes we think money would answer everything. Money doesn't answer everything. Not at all. Although he had money, he, had, he probably had people, servants in his house, and so forth. He still wanted to see Jesus. What was in him that made him give him that hunger? Could have been a discontent. Could have been uh, the spirit was dealing with him. 
We don't know. All we know is the Bible says he wanted to see Jesus. Because he heard about Jesus, but he wanted to see Jesus. The blind man was opposite in the other chapter. He was blind, but he heard Jesus was coming. Zacchaeus could see, but he couldn't see high enough to see Jesus. So in each case, it lets me know. And God, God is so wonderful. I, I sometimes get so concerned about all the mindsets. I get a lot of people with mindsets that are so off uh, from truth, so far from God. Uh, uh, writing about twisting scriptures and writing justifying, uh, justifying behaviors that are contrary to God's word. Justifying them with the Bible. Giving you verses of scripture to justify perverse things. And when I see this, it hurts me, and I want to. I want to sometimes, if I could just prove to you that I don't, I don't spend my time arguing with people. I set, I tell them what I believe and move on. You know why? Because the only way they're going to be changed is they got to meet Jesus. Amen. So if you are a seeker of truth, if you're a person that means business, I don't, I'm not talking about you trying to prove what you want to prove or prove what you think. But if you are a seeker of what's true, you will meet Jesus. Amen. Matter of fact, he's going to meet you. Mm -hmm. Because although the kids climbed to the top of the tree, that was no accident. We got to understand this. That was no accident because Jesus got where Zacchaeus was and stopped. Because this was a what? A divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Aren't you glad that you had a divine appointment? <clears throat> where would you be if God hadn't just stopped and called you by name? Amen. Adam wasn't trying to find God when he sinned. Adam and Eve weren't trying to find God. They were busy what? Hiding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And guess what? Men would never come on their own. Except there'd be some divine unction, some, some supernatural, irresistible pulling. There would never be salvation. So the Bible talks about this often. He says, he says that Jesus talked about, uh, I chose you before you chose me. I, I called you before, before you ever knew me. He says, you didn't choose me. He said, I chose you mm -hmm. and ordained you. He told Jeremiah what? Before I formed your womb, I knew you. God had already just designated John the Baptist to be the forerunner long before he was ever born. So what I'm trying to tell you right now that there's a, that makes a difference all over the world is that these people that all the different mindsets, a, I have a confidence not in me to convince them and not in some words I can say to convince them. I, you state the truth, you move on, you're all with folk. All going to do anything but make you look not unchristian. Uh, un, un mm -hmm. <laughs> state yeah. your point and move on. Mm -hmm. Because what's got to happen, like Zacchaeus found out, he was going up, maybe out of curiosity, just to set his eyes on him. But little did he know that that was a setup. Hallelujah. Amen. Little Amen. did he understand that that particular, I, I, I kind of take it on another level, that particular tree was planted on that particular road for that particular time. So God set it up. Amen. Amen. God was in charge of that. Caused that tree to be there just where it needed to be so the kids could go up and see Jesus. And when he got, when Jesus got to that point, Jesus didn't look around. Jesus looked right at why? Because he knew he was there. Aren't you glad that God knows you? Mm -hmm. Now that he know he was there, he called his name. Mm -hmm. Never met him before. Come on, can somebody say he knows my name? He knows, he knows my name. Hallelujah. Oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks, talks with me. me and tells me. I am his own. Aren't you glad he knows all about you? Not just know your name. He knows everything about you. Yes. So if someone comes to you and say they got a word from God for you, you ought to know right away that if, if God is talking to them, God got your address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Why is God going to talk to them when he can talk to, you. When he can talk to me? Mm -hmm. Only way God would talk to them uh, and not talk to me is I'm not listening. Amen. Then he'll send somebody by to confirm what you already know. Yeah. So, so, so you better believe there's a lot of people prophesying out here. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook and, and other social medias and somebody's always giving a word. And I'm waiting for them to give a word from the word. Mm -hmm. And it's rare you find that. So we got to understand that these people aren't speaking from God. They're speaking from their own imaginations. They went, but God didn't sin. I'm not saying all of them, but a whole lot of them. Jesus said there'd be false prophets in the last days. All right? So we got to see that no one is beyond saving. Who would have thought? This is the least likely man that anybody would think Jesus would go, go home. He said, now that you climbed up there, I want you to come down. So Zacchaeus came down from that tree. You got to understand that we can't get to God on our own terms. 
We can only get to God on his terms. Yeah. Jesus said, what? Well, I am the way, the truth, and, the truth and the life. So no matter what you build or try to build, you got to understand that only God is the one that saves. Yeah. So so no one beyond saving. And, and um, uh, 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 you got to get this also. Don't let anything block your view. Don't let anything block your view of Jesus. Amen. Some of y'all are not going to, to church right now because somebody hurt you at church. Mm -hmm. Amen. You say, I'm done. I'm not going. I don't need church to serve God. Yeah, but this is what God set up. God set up the body of Christ to function. And God set it up so that we are each interdependent. Mm -hmm. In other words, that I can't grow unless you're growing. We're all interdependent. And God puts people around us to trigger. Iron sharpening iron. He gives us this ability to come together and each of us form an intricate part of that body. So you are important and you ought to find yourself somewhere with a group or with a, a, a gathering of believers that you come together in the name of the Lord because that's for our growth and maturity. This is no Lone Ranger thing. You're not going to, you, you need, Lone Ranger had Tato. <laughs> and he had a horse too. So he didn't do it all on his own. All he called Lone Rangers, he didn't do it on his own, and nor can you and I. Um, listen, listen to this one. There is no shame in seeking God. There is no shame in seeking the truth. This man ran. Shorty ran. Shorty climbed. He didn't care who was talking about him. You got to get to a point you realize you got, I ain't got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of something that happened to us many years ago. I guess we were real crazy. I might have told you before. We were on this journey with some friends of ours. They remember this. And the truck broke down. We were in a van. The van broke down. Mm -hmm. And we were too far to go back. It was nothing around us. And, uh, and the road, you know, you get to the roads, nothing around us. No, no service stations around that we could see. And uh, we pull into this lot or something. Was it yeah, we were, we were in a rest stop. A rest stop. We pulled into a rest stop. And couldn't start up. And so somebody said... The Lord said, we're supposed to walk around this truck seven times. And I'm young, y'all, but I ain't want to look stupid. But then I said, well, if somebody said the Lord said do this, I'm going to do it no matter how foolish I look. After all, I ain't got nothing to lose. These people don't know me anyway. Mm -hmm. We got out. I forgot how many, maybe six or so of us probably. But we got out and walked around that van seven times, got in there, and that thing started up. It took us to where we could get serviced. Amen. So I'm Amen. telling you, we took us to our destination. We, we took all we had to go, and we got to be we able to get a service. Yes. So we got to understand that there's no shame when you're seeking the truth. We got to stop worrying about what people think about us and worry about what God knows about us. Amen. And that's a freeing place to be. It's a freeing place to be when you live in a life that you live before God. Amen. And then if God tells you to do something and seems strange, you ought to do that thing. I remember I could think about so many times people laughed to say things couldn't be done. I love I love to see their faces when God does what He does. Mm -hmm. They told us we couldn't. They told us we couldn't. They laughed. We, we, my, my wife and I got married. We didn't want to start an apartment. We want to start. We wanted to start in a home and not give money over to rent. And people said it couldn't be done. Y'all can't. Stay. We didn't have a lot of money. They laughed at us and said, "Y'all gotta crawl before you walk. You can't start off in no home. You can't do this." They told us we couldn't do this other thing. But we asked God. And guess what? We started off in the home. Amen. Amen. Because we didn't listen to what the crowd said or what people laughed and said it couldn't do. When God gives you something to do, you do that thing for God's glory. I know some of you came against a popular situation. I know I'm not preaching to myself this morning. You understand what it is to have people come against things God laid you on your heart to do. You got to go forth the door. Many people say they love Jesus and trust Jesus, but there's too many people still sitting in the boat. Amen. And very few people to get out the boat and step out and do something. Because you know why? Because our brains are, are wired for safety. Oh, y'all. Mm. Come on, man. Somebody give me a holler. Y'all, oh, I know yeah. I'm telling the truth. Our Amen. brains are wired for protection and safety. We want to do what's safe. We want to do what's usual. But it takes a different kind of person to be rewired. Yeah. The Word of God comes in and rewires us and says you no longer walk. By sight. You walk by faith and not by sight. The word of God says you now walk in a place that may not seem fleshly and, and, and by intellect it doesn't look it doesn't look safe. It doesn't make sense, but God said it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, uh trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. And lean not to your own Amen. understanding. 
Yeah. In other words, we, we got to learn how to walk the way God says walk. And God doesn't call us to walk in safety. He calls us to walk by faith. Yes. So our minds have to be rewired. And so here is this man, Zacchaeus, taking those steps to climb and to look over. But yet, we'll see what happens. So here we got to see that uh, 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 Jesus knows Zach Zacchaeus. I'll call him Zach. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows Zach before Zach saw him. He knew and even knew his name. And aren't you glad that your salvation was not a mistake this morning? Amen. It wasn't an accident that God saved you. Amen. Come and know that he touches something and say, God saved me on purpose. God, God saved, saved me on purpose. purpose. Hallelujah, somebody. He yes, saved Lord. me yes. on purpose. And he saved me for purpose. Yes. Amen. Once he saves us on purpose, he saves us for, for purpose. purpose. Yes. Amen, somebody. You got Amen. a purpose. You got purpose. This is why there's people walking around right now, grown folk. My age, walking around trying to find themselves. Baby, mm -hmm. if you haven't found yourself by now, you, you show no loss. Yes. But when you find yourself, you don't really find yourself. Someone finds you. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened? Zacchaeus went up, Zach went up to the tree to see Jesus. But guess what? Jesus was actually seeking him. But Jesus said, come on now. I must stay at your house. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means there was a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus, come on down. So can you imagine a God that loves us that much that seeks after us? Can you imagine a God that loves us that much to seek after us? That's an amazing thought. But this, this is a seeking Savior. How do I know? Because the 10th verse says, the Son of Man came to do what? To seek and to save you. Y'all give God praise right Amen. there. What is the purpose? You, Never forget the mission. That's another point all by itself. Never forget the mission. Never forget the mission. And as I was reading this passage of Scripture... I ask God to give me his heart. Because a lot of times we're not worried about the loss. I remember some uh, people, and God brought my attitude right to my mind. We were out serving tables uh, last month, and some people came up, and they were addressed. And I won't even go into details, but they, had, they were having some issues. And in my little mind, I'm thinking, let me... Uh, uh, to, you know, not, not to serve them, but in my mind, somehow I felt like I was better than them. And God showed me my attitude. We out here serving them, and somehow I thought in my own heart that I was, you know, superior. And, and I asked God to, to let me see myself in his light. To let me see that, that the same grace of God that saved me can save them. Mm -hmm. I'm no better. To let me see that person out of the eyes of compassion. Because we want to buddy and power with each other. But Jesus said, my mission is different. He said, my mission is to seek and to save the lost. What's your mission today? Does your mission line up with Jesus' mission? The lost, those that are out there, those that are, are dressed differently and act differently, have different views. These are the ones that the Lord said, he's seeking and saving. And so I asked God to give me his heart. And God is showing us his heart. When Jesus said the Son of Man came, he gives us the purpose for him being there. He gives us the purpose of why he came. He gives us the purpose of why he was sent. He gives us that purpose so we would know the real purpose of this, all this church going, all these choirs, all the things we do. The whole purpose ought to be for the church is to seek and to save the lost and also to build up the body of Christ, make it strong. Amen. That's it. Seeking to save. So Jesus knew him. Before he knew Jesus. Then he responded to the call. There's a lot of people making a whole lot of excuses. I'm going to get my life together first. I'm coming red, but I'm going to get my life together. And I'm coming over to, to, to your church. I'm coming. I want to join you. I want to get. I hear it so many times. I'm going to get my life together. But you don't see or hear. You don't see or hear any of that kind of conversation going on. This was a man who had been looked down to. Although he was rich, he was still short. But this time, the Savior did him a favor. He looked up to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it must have been a look. You know why? Because Zacchaeus came down, and Jesus, this is the first time in all scripture, only time in all scripture, where Jesus invited himself to the house. Mm -hmm. He didn't invite, he said, look, I must go to your house. He pushed his way. Aren't you glad that the Savior came in? Even against your own uh, mm -hmm. uh, will, even against your own wants. Mm -hmm. I was—I don't know where you were, but I was on my way to destruction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was running toward destruction, not walking towards it. Yeah. 
I was running in the areas of, of addictions and, 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 and perverseness. I was running in the areas of these things that were against God. Running around. I'm so glad today. How many are glad today that Jesus said, I got to come stay with you? Yeah. Aren't you glad that not only is this, this meeting, it's not only a, 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 a casual meeting. There were many crowds, people crowded all around him. But Jesus said, I'm going to stay with you today. And guess what? When, when the Lord puts his hand on your life, you know, uh, you got to be ready because people are going to talk about you. And all the scribes and Pharisees sit back, how can he, he's supposed to be a holy man, how can he go and stay with a sinner like that? Jesus came for that reason. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So let people judge your crowd. As long as you're not conforming to the crowd, you can be anywhere and still represent. Amen. 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 Y'all hear me? Amen. You can be anywhere and still represent. You can be anywhere and not participate. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. you're there not to show them how cool you are as a Christian. How you're not that, uh, so far off that you don't do things they do. You're there to be a light. And how many know the dark of the world getting? We need some people to be a light. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Jesus didn't light your light to put it on a bushel. He lit you. How many say I'm lit? I'm lit. <laughs> he lit you so you could be seen. Amen. Amen. He lit you so he can so you can be an example of what it is to live. You can be light in McDonald's as you go to work. A light as a custodial worker. A light as you're a business owner. A light wherever you are. Sanitation worker. Be a light as a nurse, as a doctor. Be a light. I found out in the work that I used to do, I found out that God's got people everywhere. Mm -hmm. I met people that were dumping trash to people who were executives in, in different departments who knew the Lord. Amen. 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 God's got people everywhere. So wherever Amen. you are, let the light of Jesus Christ shine through you. Yes. So don't, don't wait. And I, I remember waiting. I'm waiting for God to open up some full-time ministry for me. I'm waiting for some church to, to take me on full-time so I can stop working. And then God tapped me on the shoulder one day. He said, you are in full-time work. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. He said you are in full-time work because you take Fed, you take Jesus to FedEx. That's right. Yes. And you let people know what a, what a child of God looks like driving the truck. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. You, let, you let the customers know how you deliver a package for the Lord. Amen. And you realize wherever you go is a mission field. So wherever you are right now in life, don't be waiting on a place to serve. Where you are, serve where you are. Amen. You go to the job, I'm the only saved person. They always fussing. They always cuss. They always, and I just stay to myself. No, you ought not stay to yourself. You ought to go out there and talk about Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody needs a light. Amen. Amen. I don't mean to be obnoxious. I don't mean to be wearisome. I mean that you can sit in the presence and not gossip. You can turn the situation around. Well, what did you guys do this weekend? Did, uh, did you go to service? Uh, you, you can turn the situation around. Be a light. You want to sit back in a corner and, and think you're better than they are when nothing but the grace of God saved you, baby. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The grace of God picked us up from dirt. The Amen. grace of God is still keeping us. The grace of God is nothing that we can boast in ourselves and only boast on Jesus Christ. Amen. So here Amen. is that kid, a man of short stature, but a man who's doing big things. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. The man who had a divine appointment with God. A man who could take criticism, but he was a man that also acknowledged him as Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, he said, Lord, I, I've done some bad things, but right now I'm going to give half of my goods that I've accumulated and I'm going to give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. He said, if I wrong anybody, I'm going to pay them back four times as much. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Y'all see repentance there? Jesus didn't say, Zacchaeus, get it together before I come to you. He came to him, called him right, right where he was. God calls you right where you are. You had to fix a thing, but I'm going to tell you something. It must have been something about that glimpse. Oh, give God the glory. It's something about seeing Jesus. You can't tell me you see Jesus and there's been no transformation. Yes. This man who swindled all his life, who was a train swindler for the enemy of his own people, stabbed his own people in the back, working for the enemy. Guess what? Now he's saying that I'm going to give half of what I accumulated, I'm going to give it away. Some people stand and we even had people on TV recently talking about they, they, were, they made some mistakes in their teaching and, 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 and they go in there and repent of these things. If you have any of the material, throw it out. But they should be saying, I'm going to send you a refund. Hello. Amen. Somebody. Amen. For Amen. see, repentance is more than saying, I'm sorry. You've got to also pay up what you took from people. Mm -hmm. 
But you don't hear those kind of messages. Real repentance demonstrates itself. Real repentance, understand that when you do something to harm someone, you ought to do what you can do to get it right. Mm -hmm. So if I sold you some bad material, I ought to send you some right stuff or replace what I gave you. Mm -hmm. I ought to make some kind of restitution that's called. Amen. Amen. And Jesus didn't sit down and tell Zacchaeus, now you know you got to pay your tithe, you know you got to do. He didn't talk about any of those things. Zacchaeus said this. Zacchaeus said, half of all my money. And I've accumulated. Why did he say half? Because he got to have some give back to people who cheated. Half of all my money, I'm going to give to those who I robbed. And then he said, if I wrong anybody else, I'm going to give them back 400% of what they gave, what I cheated them out of. Can you imagine a line as a kid's door? Wow. Mm. <laughs> mm. Y'all talk about repentance? Mm. And Jesus, you know what Jesus said to him? He said, I got to go to, he said, this day, Salvation has come to your house. Amen. Which says that not only does Zacchaeus turn around, but Zacchaeus is going to influence a whole lot of other people. Yeah. Amen. And when you're saved, I remember some time ago, I was thinking about it today, and I'm just about done. Thinking about it today, there was a, a young man who I won't call names because most some of the people I know know him, but he came to Cornerstone, where I was at Cornerstone at the time. He came into the church and he joined in to the fellowship, the Bible studies and stuff. And he was from a Jehovah's Witness background where his mother and all his family went Jehovah's Witness. He came in and got a hold to the gospel. And got excited about Christ. And he just went home. A couple Sundays later, his mother and family came to church. Because mm. they he had been changed so much. His wow. family, oh, y'all better give God Amen. praise. Amen. He had been Amen. changed so much, his family wanted to know what's going on up in that church. Yeah. Mm. And they don't come in church. Jehovah's Witnesses don't come in churches. But he was so changed. So he says all his house. That means everybody in the house got saved because Zacchaeus got saved. Amen. You know what happened? Everybody under him would have to do business differently. Oh, mm -hmm. y'all give God praise yeah. right there. Amen. And, 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 and all, all the people that he cheated would now be paid back. All the influence around him would now be paid back. So you got to understand that I wonder today how many people are going to be in heaven because Zacchaeus had a change in his life. Mm. Amen. So when God saves you, it's not just for you. Mm -mm. It's for all the people around you to see what God can do. Yes. When God gives you a testimony, I don't care how many people get tired of hearing it. Can I tell you this real quick? I'm about to take my seat soon. <laughs> tell you this real God brought you through so you could be a witness to the story. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. He brought you through so you could tell somebody. Mm -hmm. yes. He brought you out to be a witness. Mm -hmm. I told my wife the other day, we don't have to make up a testimony. Nope. We're going to try to work a testimony up. We are a testimony. Hallelujah. Yes. Never the Lord say that the Spirit of God will come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Yeah. You're going to make up a witness. You're going to work something up. You just live the life and tell people what God did for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Kias was saved in all his house. I'm going to end with this one. Think about this. That Kias went up a tree to see Jesus. And then a few days later, Jesus will hang what? On a tree mm -hmm. to save the world. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so, so we got to understand that there's some pictures going on here. That Zacchaeus went up to get salvation. But Jesus hung up for our salvation. Aren't you glad about it? Yeah. Amen. Aren't you glad he paid that price for you and yeah. I? Yes. You and I, that Jesus Christ, he was on his way. But you know what? He was on his way to Calvary, but he stopped by because that, he said, I must come to your house. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. He stopped by on his last, this is his last journey through this town in his, in his body. In his physical body. But he had to stop by town to meet one man. All the crowds around him. But there was the divine appointment. Aren't you glad about it? Yeah. Yeah. Because Jesus says this. He's on the Rome. He's doing it. and I, he's, not, he's no longer walking in, in his earthly body on the earth. But he's walking through you and I. You know what he says his mission is? His mission is simple. He spells out to us. I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. And aren't you glad he found you? Yes. Hallelujah. You give me all the praise. Amen. Aren't you glad? Thank you, Lord. You have a seeky Savior. I know we say, come to Jesus. And we sing the song, come to Jesus, don't we? Mm -hmm. But it's something else to turn this song around and say, Jesus came to me. Hallelujah. Amen. You Amen. serve a seeking Savior. And a seeking Savior is able to turn anybody around. So what's amazing with this is this man's whole nature was turned by one glimpse of Jesus. That's all I want for those of you listening to me right now. I want you to get a glimpse of Jesus. 
Once you get a glimpse of Jesus, nobody has to tell you no plan, no direction. Once you get a glimpse of him, he will come in and turn your whole life around. I had Zach here standing right here. He was able to say amen right now. He'd be jumping mm -hmm. up. Amen. He'd be tapping in my kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> say, you telling him right, brother. That's how I met Jesus. God bless you. We might be coming to lead us in our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For once again, visiting this household, visiting this ministry, visiting um, everybody on the center of our voices right now, Lord. Thank you for um, just being you. Thank you. Thank you for seeking us so we knew to seek you. Lord, you, you, you seek us, through, you come directly to us and let us know that you are the way, the truth, and the light. Lord, I can't say thank you enough. You, you've created a, a, new, a new household in the hearts of everybody in the center of our voice. If they, if they haven't accepted you into, the, into their life right now or yet, please have them accept them, accept you into their heart. Let them know that you can bring them through any situation, no matter what it, no matter what it is, if it's sickness, if it's physical, if it's mental, no matter what this world throws at us, you can handle it all. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. So there's no problem that we have in our lives that you can't handle, Lord. Mm -hmm. Teach us to trust and have faith in you, Lord. Lord, I can't say thank you enough for my own personal life. The simple fact that I'm standing right here, the simple fact you can understand, people can understand my voice. It's all a miracle. Yes, I do. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, please continue to touch this ministry. Take us where you want us to go. If you're not there, we will, don't want to go. We know that you're going to put us into a building. And we're trusting in you. Lord, make every step. E guide us into every step. Guide our every step. No matter where we go, we want you to, you, we want to follow you. We don't want to go our own way. We want to go your way. And that's it. If it's not you, it's not right. We want to go walk right around side with you. You are our shepherd. We're your sheep. It's that simple. People, the main issue with today is that we have so many people with so much pride. They refuse to bow the knee to you. Let them know that that's the only way to live. The only way to live in abundance. Until they make you their Lord and Savior, they will completely be destroyed by this world, this darkness. They continue to have that hole in their soul. Only you can fill. Lord, please touch us directly, touch us mentally, physically, and spiritually, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Some of us um, don't have money, but we have something richer, something more valuable. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Even the disciples. Early in their ministry, told the beggar sitting by the door of the synagogue, they said, Silver and gold have we none. Amen. Mm -hmm. But such as we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You can be rich in power, mm -hmm. you can be rich in uh, spiritual wisdom and understanding, you can be rich in peace and love and joy. These are the things money can't buy. Money couldn't buy the kids' way in. Money can't buy our way in. But you know what? You can come without money with a price. Without money or price. And receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And that's our desire for you today. That you would accept him. Be open to him like Zacchaeus was. Open your heart and your life to him. Come in. That you'll come in and transform your life. God bless you. We thank God for you being with us today. Thank God for you stopping by to be with us doing this a brief, a brief service that we have each week. We pray that God will use this message to help someone's life be turned around. Amen. We thank God for each one of you. God bless you. Join us again here next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school, 11 a.m. for our services. Keep us in your prayers as we prepare for our outreach ministry this month. Keep us in your prayers as we seek to the God's face as to what we should do with the ministry. 
that we want to take those next steps. We stepped out in faith. We want to step back now. We want to keep moving forward in faith. So we thank God for you. In Jesus' name, uh, King of Praise Ministry signing out. Amen. Amen.